Today's NDE story is an anonymous submission from Diane who drowned while on a river rafting trip. I hope you enjoy the story. The next thing I knew, I was 100 feet above the river, looking down at the raft stuck against the rocks below. I saw the two men in the raft looking for me to come out from underneath. I saw the other woman who had been on our raft downstream clinging to a rock. I watched my husband and my teenage sister who had rafted without incident. From above, I watched my husband climb onto a rock in the river. He couldn't hear what the two men still in the raft were shouting to him over the roar of the water. He had no idea where I was or what had happened, but he knew I was missing. He looked as if he wanted to jump in and try and find me. And I suddenly found myself at his side, trying to stop him because he wasn't much of a swimmer and I knew there was no point. When I reached out to stop him, my hand went right through him. I looked at my hand and thought, oh my God, I'm dead. At that instant, total knowledge of reality appeared to me and I saw the multidimensionality of the universe. My consciousness expanded so far beyond the physical plane that I was no longer aware of it, nor of myself. I was so much a part of it all. There was no distinction. It was a brilliant flash of light and I was allowed to see into it for a brief moment and experience a feeling of love so profound, powerful and overwhelming that I can only describe it as pure bliss, even though that doesn't begin to describe it. Suddenly I was whisked away and found myself traveling rapidly through a vortex toward a beautiful white light in the far, far distance. I continued to experience an overwhelming feeling of love within me and around me. There was no fear, no anxiety, and no worry. I even felt as if I'd done this before and was remembering that I was going home. I was filled with joy. I had no sense of a body, no feeling of limits or boundaries. Yet I was still me and aware that I was having this experience. Before long, I realized I wasn't alone. There was someone whom I can only describe as a loving being of light traveling beside me at the speed of light. We communicated mentally. This was someone I have always known, and I knew as soon as I sensed the presence of this being, yet I cannot now tell you who it was. I didn't have the sense that it was any familiar religious figure or deceased relative, but rather a special friend who is always with me wherever I am, perhaps my guardian angel. This being told me telepathically that I had a choice about going back. I thought, no, 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 I want this to go on forever. Suddenly we burst into the light and a whole new reality was revealed to me, similar to the physical world, but in this higher vibration, more colorful, more beautiful, more amazing. I saw plants, trees, mountains, lakes, animals, and shimmering crystal-like buildings, some very large and ornate. I saw beings moving about, light beings going about their daily lives. They don't have physical bodies, but they are distinct fields of energy. They don't walk, they float. They have lives much like ours, but without the struggles and sorrows. They are artists, musicians, dancers, singers, inventors, builders, healers, creators of magical things, things they will manifest in their next lifetime in the physical universe. Again, the being of light told me it was my choice to stay or go, but that there was still more for me to do in that life and it wasn't quite time for me to leave. Still hesitating, I was told that if I chose to go back, I would be given certain knowledge to take back with me to share with others. After much discussion, I agreed to go back and suddenly found myself in front of a tall cone-shaped building, so tall it seemed to go on forever. I was told this was the hall of knowledge. I entered the building and flew spiraling upwards through what appeared to be shelves of books like a library, many millions of books, and I flew through them all. 
When I reached the top, I burst through into a kaleidoscope of color, and at the same time, my head popped out of the water. I was downriver about 10 yards from the raft. I immediately became aware of where I was and grabbed for the nearest rock. I was able to pull myself up and I coughed up a lot of water. I was in a state of shock, but needed no medical attention. I don't know how long I was under the raft. No one was looking at their watch at the time. It could have been three or four minutes. It could have been 10. There was no time where I had been.